Okay, so the question before us today is, tonight is, is Darwinian evolution a fact? So the first thing I need to do is define what I mean by Darwinian evolution. Now, I am defining Darwinian evolution as the modern synthesis or neo-Darwinism. And the reason for this is because it's the foundation currently of evolutionary theory. And there are objections to the neo-Darwinian modern synthesis by the likes of James Shapiro, Dennis Noble, and others. Subur Ahmad critiques neo-Darwinism primarily because it forms the foundation of the theory of evolution, which he sees as conflicting with Islamic creation narratives. In doing so, he engages in poisoning the well tactics by misrepresenting the views of scientists James Shapiro and Dennis Noble. While both scholars offer critical insights and revisions to aspects of Darwinian theory, neither rejects the core principles of evolution. Their work aims to expand and refine evolutionary theory, not to dismantle it. They are revisionists. They don't challenge the foundation of evolutionary theory. In the following video, we see how Sabor is deceiving the Muslim community by misrepresenting James Shapiro and Dennis Noble for his creationist agenda. But actually... The interesting thing that they said is that in that research, they said to you it's not just random blind natural selection. It is a guided one. That research I'm putting for you here in the, in the Nature magazine, they would say to you, developmental bias and natural selection work together rather than selection being free to transver uh, transverse over uh, any physical possibility. It is guided along specific routes. My question is guided by who? <laughs> who's, who's guided this natural cell? They, they just put a, a fancy name, parallel evolution, and they, they say to you that it has to be guided, and they don't give you an explanation. Who, who's guiding it? Who's guiding that fish to produce the same exact uh, species or almost identical to the same other fish that in a completely different location that you claim to us it is based on your environment, you have the, the evolution taking place? Come on, what are you guys saying? You know, I'm more. I don't know how these people, Liani, Subhanallah. I don't know how these people they, they have they can come with a straight face and say to you, evolution is facts. I seriously don't know. Okay, okay, moving on. James Shapiro and Dennis Noble believe in the theory of evolution. Their work is entirely within naturalistic biology. They accept that humans and other primates share a common ancestry. They don't invoke God, intelligent design or supernatural forces driving evolution in any form. What they actually do is. Within the evolutionary discipline, they are pushing for a better, broader framework than the strict neo-Darwinian mechanism. Both Shapiro and Noble are respected scientists with legitimate credentials and have published in peer-reviewed journals. Many in the scientific community agree that neo-Darwinism is incomplete, especially in light of epigenetics, regulatory networks, horizontal gene transfer, symbiogenesis, but not mainstream consensus. Their core critiques, e.g. that random mutations are not central or that cells can direct their own evolution, are considered controversial or minority positions. In summary, are Sapiro and Nobel respected? Yes, within their disciplines. Are their views mainstream? not widely accepted as central to evolutionary biology. Do they reject evolution? No, they fully support evolution. Are they shaping debate? Yes, especially in areas like systems biology and epigenetics. Are their views uh, misused by creationists? Sometimes, but they don't support creationism. So, as I understand it, this is the argument of Sobur. And we will see later if I misrepresent him. Premise 1. Two controversial scientists challenge the strict neo-Darwinian mechanism. Conclusion. Therefore, neo-Darwinism is not true. Conclusion number 2. Therefore, the theory of evolution is not true. This is his argument. Now, this is the big question that's being debated between two great giants of evolutionary theory. In the camp of neo-Darwinism, you have Richard Dawkins. And in the camp of anti-neo-Darwinism, you actually have Dennis Noble. Now, this interesting debate took place about two years ago. Both of them went head to head. And what you see in this debate is they are essentially arguing on a very simple point about causality. But then that 
lifts into other areas. And primarily they're focusing on Dennis Noble's book, Dance to the Tune of Life, which is published by Cambridge University. So I'm gonna be using the arguments of Dennis Noble from this book, which have been battle tested against the likes of Dawkins. Now there's four pillars of neo-Darwinism, according to Dennis Noble, and all four of these pillars, according to him, have fallen. The first one is the central dogma, which is DNA to RNA to proteins. It, there's only one way causation of information. Now, according to him, that's not true. Although the dogma holds in that direction, it is not the only way that information is conveyed. The second pillar is the Wiseman barrier. This is the idea that the genome is isolated from the soma cells. The third is the passive vehicle, that the organism is a passive vehicle to retain genes which are active causally in the process of evolution. The last pillar is the pillar of randomness. So what Dennis Noble is challenging is the idea that randomness can actually generate function. He doesn't deny randomness. This is a common straw man that's made against him. However, what he's challenging is the idea that randomness in of itself can generate biological functionality. Sobur presents Dennis Nobel's case, but he doesn't prove his case. Whether Dennis Nobel's theories are true is for scientists to decide with experiments and peer-reviewed studies, not audience in a debate. Therefore, by definition, Sobur is not achieving his goals in this debate. Proving Dennis Nobel's theory is true, he doesn't do that, certainly not discredit the theory of evolution in favor of Islamic creation myths. Even if Nobel's theories are true, the theory of evolution is still true, and Islamic creation stories are still false. In a recent debate with Dave Farina, titled, Is Darwinian Evolution a Fact?, Sabor Ahmad based much of his argument on Dennis Noble's critique of neo-Darwinism. While it's true that Noble challenges the strict gene-centric mutation plus selection model of neo-Darwinism, he does not reject biological evolution itself. In fact, Noble accepts that humans and other primates share a common ancestry, a view that directly contradicts traditional Islamic creation narratives. A few months earlier, in the video that sparked this debate, Subbor and Muhammad Ali openly mock the theory of evolution as a whole, not just neo-Darwinism. Okay. Sure. Shall I share the okay. presentation and get yeah, started? Yeah, that's fine. That's right, fine. Bismillah. Shall. Okay. Okay, so the theory of evolution factor fiction. And I want to say something important here, right? What is a fact? Right? Something that we need to keep in mind, right? Now, let's leave the definitions of philosophical definitions, jargon, and all of this stuff. We're not going to get into that. Generally, when someone says something is a fact, they say that there is no doubt in that thing. There is no doubt in it. We agree on it. We you know? accepted uh, definition. It's, it's of a fact a that water is wet. Fact. Definition, scientific fact. A scientific fact is an observation that has been repeatedly confirmed and accepted as true by the scientific community. It is a statement about the world that is empirically verifiable and consistently observable under specific conditions. Key characteristics. Empirical, based on direct observation or measurement. Repeatable, verified by repeated experiments or observations. Objective, independent of personal belief or opinion. Provisional, like all science, facts are open to revision if new, better evidence emerges, but they are highly reliable. Example, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at sea level, a scientific fact. The earth orbits the sun, a scientific fact. All organisms are made of cells, a scientific fact. Evolution through natural selection occurs, considered a fact, while theories explain how and why. Note here that Sobur doesn't correct his ignorant friend that doesn't know what is a scientific fact, because that is exactly what Sobur does or intends to do. Give vague implications against evolution and then pretends that the theory of evolution is ad hoc. We're not going to get someone in the future who's coming, going to come and disagree that, you know what, no, 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 water. I'm not sure really that water is wet, but no, no, it could be wet sometimes and sometimes it could not be wet. Fact is a fact. So what happens is in the scientific community, what they do is that they sell you evolution as a fact. 
There's no doubt about that. You go to universities, if you study in university, study anything related to biology, it's already a fact. People believe evolution is a fact, right? So what I'm going to try to demonstrate now, is it really fact or is it the opposite of fact? Is it fiction, right? Is Sabah Ahmed critiquing a narrow mechanism within evolutionary biology or denying evolution entirely? Unlike Dennis Noble, who believes the theory of evolution is a fact and only challenges the strict neo-Darwinian mechanism, Subba Ahmad, although in formal debates, adopts Dennis Noble's soft position, his true intentions are to mislead the Muslim community to doubt evolution entirely. As we see in the title of his presentation referring to the theory of evolution and encouraging his ignorant friend to claim evolution is fiction. He said, we assume evolution is true, even though we don't agree it is. And then we start defending why we don't believe in evolution. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's a, I see that's the biggest problem that we have today, right? We yeah. need to understand, look, the other person needs to come and give me the evidence, demonstrable, uh, can demonstrate evidence to me in front of my eyes. Look, this is the evidence, why evolution is true. And then I can maybe think about, okay, refuting the evidence that he's bringing forward, critiquing it, and this and that. It's like you, me starting a conversation with an atheist and then him accepting the assumption according to his worldview that God exists, and then I ask him, this proof God. Would any atheist ever accept that? No. So why are we why are we doing that? That's a good example. That's a very good example. Exactly what you said. I, I, I love the way that you put it. You know, if a Christian comes up to me and um, they are, sorry, not Christian, sorry, a Darwinist comes up to me and they want to put the onus on me. I'm going to say, no, the onus is on you. You're the one that made the claim. I'm the one who's silent. You're the one that's claiming there is a universal common ancestor. It was a blind, random process. So what you did right now, I think, will give a lot of people confidence. Because they know that they can just sit there, fold their arms, and they need to wait for the other side to give the presenting case. And all they Absolutely. need to do is challenge. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are hundreds, possibly thousands, books that cover various aspects of Darwinian evolution, from the basics of natural selection to advanced discussions on genetics, speciation, and human evolution. Starting from On the Origins of Species by Charles Darwin was first published on the second half of the 19th century. Richard Dawkins alone published 17 books on Darwinian evolution. Even if Sobur doesn't agree with this vast science and academia, extending at the very least one and a half centuries, that doesn't mean Darwinists make empty claims. They just fold their arms and expect people to believe them without evidence. That is a clear mockery of science and a caricature of Darwinian evolution that Dennis Nobel doesn't subscribe to. It's very evident that Sobur misrepresents Dennis Nobel and, and other scientists critical of neo-Darwinism neo to push his silly, unscientific Islamist agenda.